it to roll on first down, and it's picked off. Touchdown. LeVar Arrington. What's up, everybody? It's LeVar Arrington here, and you're listening to my little brother, the man, the myth, the legend, Jared Payton and the Jared Payton Show. Welcome back, everybody. It's the Jared Payton Show, ChicagolandSportsRadio.com. We got one of our FOPs on the line right now, Michael C. Wright from ESPN, who covers the Bears all day, all day, all night. Mike C. Wright, what's going on, fella? Not much, man. About to enjoy another day in beautiful bourbon, eh, my man? <laughs> well, I know we got to get you on and get you off, man. You got a lot of stuff going on. But just uh, the mood so far, I mean, people down – just the fans, too. I want to know about that because a lot of people are tweeting me, asking me when I'm coming down, the atmosphere of the fans in Bourbon A. Well, I can honestly say uh, this, well, this is my third training camp covering the Bears, and from what I've seen, this is the, the biggest fan turnout I've seen. Uh, I, I know that during that night practice, for instance, they had over 12,000 people here, and there, there's never been that many people here. So, you know, the I, I guess expectations are high right now, and uh, there's a lot of people coming out because I think they want to see what, what this new offense looks like. See, everybody wants to know. You know what? We talk about the offense, and last time we talked, uh, was it Monday that we talked? Monday we talked about how, you know, the left tackle spot is, is you know, is it one of those question marks? Another question mark for me is that safety position. How is this thing going to turn out when we get closer to the season? I still think it's going to be Chris Conte and Major right in there as the starters. You've got guys like Brandon Hart and uh, Craig Stills, you know, those guys. They're, they're pushing they're pushing, pushing the starters, but I, I, I see Chris Conte and Major Wright kind of winning that battle. Uh, right now they've, they've looked pretty good and they haven't been making any, you know, it, there's not, not any mental bust or anything like that. The safeties look quick and, you know, I mean, in the past, the Bears have run a lot of cover two type of uh, stuff. And if you go back to last year, you know, there was a, they, they didn't run a ton of cover two. They ran a lot of single high stuff. And the reason why they did it is because they were confident in, in what Conti could do back there on the back end. To go ahead and compliment what you were talking about Monday, Coach Lovey Smith threw a lot of compliments the way of Tim Jennings on yesterday after practice, talking about his great hands and the way he competes and the way he just makes plays and he plays bigger than his stature. Talk about him and Peanut and what you think they can add to the mix, especially with the wide receiving cores that they have to go up against each and every week in this division. Well, I think Tim Jennings, he's the biggest question mark right now. Uh, you know, Peanut is Peanut. I mean, he's a pro bowler, and, you know, you saw that yesterday. Uh, he, t- he picked off Jay Cutler during team drills and took it to the house. But uh, Tim Jennings, in my mind, is the guy that, you know, you, you want to see whether – whether the way he's he's performing right now translates into the uh, regular season because, you know, uh, Lovey's right. I mean, Tim has been playing his butt off. And like I was telling you guys the other day, a lot of times he's matched up one-on-one with Brandon Marshall. And, you know, Tim Tim wins his fair share of battles, but a lot of the time it, it's, you know, it, it's a matter of Jay Cutler just throwing the ball and Brandon Marshall basically just posting him up and taking the ball away from him. Yeah. But, you know, every time that's happened, you know, Tim has been right there. So, you know, Tim looks like he's really worked on his game. Uh, I think he'll be fine, but he's got to catch the ball. You know, that was the big thing last year. I mean, how many picks, how many picks did we see just bounce off his hands last year? Yeah. You know, and, and I think if he if he makes some of those picks, I think it makes the, the difference in a couple of those ball games that they lost down the stretch. Let's talk about the offensive line. We know that's the elephant in the room anytime you talk about the Chicago Bears. Lovey said he has a timetable, but he's giving equal share, him and Mike Tice, to both Chris Williams and, oh, man, the name just skips me just that quick. They were, uh, oh, Jamarcus they were. Webb. There you go. Jamarcus Webb and Chris Williams at the left tackle situation. Give us a little update on who's looking better, and is it pretty much just up and down each and every series? Well, it, it had been pretty, pretty much up and down, like, the, the last, uh, I guess, earlier in, in, in camp. But yesterday, I think those guys had their best day. Uh, one thing I noticed about Chris Williams, he's playing with a lot more nasty than he has before. Hmm. Uh, you know, And Jay Webb looked a lot better yesterday. So I think this is going to be one of those ones that, you know, it's going to be a tough decision for that coaching staff. But, you know, right now, neither one of them has really emerged as, and separated himself from the other. So 
it's still a neck and neck battle, and you know I think it can go either way. Talking with Mike C right here on the Jerry Payne Show, ChicagolandSportsRadio.com. Mike, um, another big question for me on the offensive side, of the ball, the tight end position. Um, we we saw the comments that um, Kellen Davis was making about that if he, you know, was coming back uh, as free agent, if he was going to sign, if they were going to promote Mike, uh, if they weren't going to promote Mike Tice, and March was still going to be here, he didn't want to be here. He was going to go elsewhere. We knew that there was a problem there, especially probably why because the tight end wasn't used in that offense like it should have been. Now, how is the tight end going to be used in this new Tice offense? Well, right now, the way the way the 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 route tree, the plays, you know, what the way it's set up, the tight end is one of the you know one of the primary reads. And in the past, that wasn't the case. Yeah. You know, I mean, when Jay Cutler goes through his progressions, a lot of times. The tight end now is the number one or the number two option, so you know that that's a lot different than the past. You know, the tight end was you know he was he wasn't even in the progression in the past, so I think that's the biggest difference. I know last year, uh, you know, at training camp, Kellen Davis was catching passes all over the field, so you know we were all writing that oh okay, well finally Mike Marsh is going to utilize the tight end in the offense, and then when the regular season rolled around, I mean Kellen Davis became basically a blocker again. So, you know, I think this one this year is gonna be a lot different. And, you know, I, I think that tight end is gonna be a major weapon for him. And you know, like I, I've been saying this, look out for Evan Rodriguez. Uh, you know, I was really down on him during mini camp and organized team activities, stuff like that. But, you know, he's really come along and he's as athletic as they come. I mean, I think he can kinda of fall in that line of those Aaron Aaron Gonzalez, you know, those type of uh, tight ends. Yesterday, Brian Price, first day in practice for the Chicago Bears. Did he look like he should be a part of an NFL Films production or more like an NFL Follies production? Uh, I'd say the latter <laughs> because, man, you know, he, oh, my gosh. I mean, there were a couple of times where he was just, just humiliated out there. And, you know, he didn't get a ton of reps, but the times he did get in there, I mean, it was, it was almost like an undrafted rookie free agent out there against an all-pro guy. Now, with that being said, though, we've got to take into account the fact that he's lost 30 pounds from, you know, when he played last year. We also have to remember that yesterday was his first day, you know, so he's not, he's not in tune to what they're doing on defense just yet. And, you know, I mean, he was nervous. I mean, you, you've got a guy out there on his first day going against guys that have been out there three or four days. You know, they've got their, their legs under them now. So, you know, I, I think, for Brian, it's just a matter of kind of working himself in this, into playing shape and getting to know what the, what this team does defensively. Hey, Mike, before we let you go, I got one question, and this one this actually was stems from what we were talking about earlier. Jay Cutler, the are we going to see his best season this season? And I think a, a big reason why I ask that is because he has a little bit more freedom at the line to be able to call some certain things in, in audible. Are we going to see a different player and a more explosive offense? with him being able to check out of stuff when he sees stuff that he doesn't like? Well, I think we I think we will. I mean, you know, it's kind of like that, like what I was saying about Mike Tice. He calls it that duh offense. You know, when they when they get up to the line of scrimmage and they notice the, uh, the count in the tackle box, I mean, basically Jay Cutler has the, the freedom to, you know, okay, if the, if, the, if the count is high and they're about to run the ball, well, you know, Jay, uh, Jay has the option to audible out of it and run a pass play and vice versa. But, you know, I think another thing is that's very interesting in this whole situation is that the whole, all the players on offense, they all have input into, you know, how they, how they run this offense. I mean, they're, you know, they're, they're, they're playing this to run all the plays that, you know, the guys on the team like. And so every player has input on that. And I think when that's the case, I think the players are more apt to take ownership of it and to me, it, it makes them play that much harder because they want to prove that, you know, the, the input they have, they want to prove that stuff works. So, you know, I, I think it's going to be all around, you know, all around is going to be a more explosive offense. And I think it's because it's a it's a big collaborative effort between not only the, the, the coaches, but the players also. Yeah. yeah, Mike, see, I remember last year when we went through the gauntlet of getting killed, Jay getting killed down against New Orleans and then getting killed on Monday night against Detroit. Everybody was talking about the offensive line. I remember you sticking your neck out and saying, look, I've seen open receivers in these games, and Jay Cutler just hasn't hit them, even though the blitz has been right in his face. 
So when you talk about everything being right there for him to see, being able to audible and everybody having input, it seems like there's more pressure on his shoulders for the success of this offense this season. Yeah, it is. But I think I think ultimately that's what he wanted. I mean, hmm. you know, it's like anything else. Um, you know, if you're going to go down, you want to go down the way the way you you want to do it. You know yeah. what I mean? Like it's like with a coach. You know, yeah. a coach is like, hey, if I want to go down, I'm, I want to go down with my guys. Yeah. And I think that this is the, the situation with Jay. And, you know, I, I kind of think that he relishes the pressure. Well, listen, Mike, we'll definitely talk to you soon, man. Have a great day in Bourbon, eh, man? Stay out of the sun a little bit, man. Wear a hat when the berets I'll try to, man, because I'm getting black out there, man. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man, we'll talk to you soon, bro. All right, guys. All right, Mike C. Wright, ESPN Chicago, covers the Bears all day. All.